<laughs> Praise God. Nasa gitna ba to? Wala, no? Uh, I mean, this one? Alrighty. Praise the Lord. Uh, where's my clicker? Yes. Are we alive? Is it broken? Okay. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Praise God. Uh, shall we all stand up? We will pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Panginoon, salamat sa iyong kabutihan sa amin. God, you're so good. You are so, so good. God, you are so good to us. Lord Jesus, we can never match your goodness, not even one iota. And yet you just kept pouring your goodness, Lord. Today, we're going to look at your goodness some more. Father, focused on us, Lord God, your goodness. Father, we thank you. When we look at our lives, we see there is nothing in us that deserves your goodness. And yet, you just kept on doing it and doing it and doing it because you are such a good God. Father, we pray that we might have the wisdom that you have upon us, Lord God, so that we might understand why this is all about. I pray that you will uh, acknowledge to us, Lord God, so that we might walk in that. I pray, Father, that you will give us the anointing to enjoy, Lord God, the very goodness that you have given us so that we might be able to flow in it and share it to others. Father, we thank you for this very day that you have set in your calendar so that we might enjoy your word, your presence, and each other. Lord, I recognize you're here. You are definitely here, Lord God. Your presence, Jesus, I thank you. And minister to us, Holy Spirit, and your angels, and we come against the spirits that are not from you. We rebuke them in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. This thing's right up in my nose. Hallelujah. You may be seated. You know, we have been discussing the Old Testament, and, uh, and, and I like it. Today we'll be looking at yung tabernacle of Moses. Um, again, we have promised that we will, this will be exciting. It will not be a boring thing. There will be many, many things that we thought it was a mystery Today, we will know more about the goodness of God. Just before I continue, I like yung ating uh, loop video. You know, pag tinignan mo talagang uh, the water is flowing, mukhang malapot, pero <laughs> it's going. It's going. Thank God. That's Oasis. Again, the challenge of pastor, for those who would like to design, bring it on. Bibigyan namin kayo ng, uh, ng trip around your house at saka dalawang empanada. Uh, yung empanada cannot get out of my mind. Man, I'm probably the first one to jump over there. Praise the Lord. Uh, this is what the Bible said in Exodus chapter 25, verse 8. And let them make me a sanctuary that I might dwell among them. Exodus 25, verse 8. The Israelites left Egypt. They lived as slaves. When they left, they had tents. They pitched their tents anywhere where the fire would come, fire or smoke would carry them. Until one day, God said, because he was carried over by his love, I want to live with them. I want to live with them. I have a dog. His name is Kippy. One day, the house was so hot, hindi pa na set up yung air conditioner. My boy and myself, and uh, the boys actually, the girls, you know, went somewhere else. We started to pitch uh, a, a sleeping place dun po sa deck namin. And alam niyo kung sino pera, very excited? Yung aso. <laughs> like, wow, they get to live with me. Yeah, because he thought probably he's a, a person or he thought we're dogs also. So regardless of how close the place, you, he, you will always find him next to you. He likes to snuggle. You know, God is not a dog. Although if you turn it around, it's a dog, you know. He likes to snuggle with us. God who is in heaven, the holy God said, make me a sanctuary. The word here was in, in, uh, in, in Septuagint is, make me a tabernacle. Tabernaculum meaning, napakahaba pero in English it's a hut. Gawa mo ako ng bahay kubo. Yun act sa Tagalog, pag translate mo literally, gawa mo ako ng kubo-kubo at mo ako sa gitna nila. That is what it is. 
Make me a hut and let me stay in the midst of them. The holy, powerful God na lagi na nareklamuhan, lagi na kinukomplain, na lagi sila nagreklamo at yung balik na tayo sa Egypt and all that, said, no, I want to sit right there. I want to be next to them. In fact, the Greek word, the, the Hebrew word for this is Mishkan. It's a, a heavenly dwelling. Mishkan is a heavenly dwelling uh, designed by God for him in the middle of the camp. A Mishkan. Have you heard of the word Shekinah? Shekinah? That's also a originating from the Mishkan, meaning the glory of God dwelling in a hut, dun po sa bahay, kubo na yun, in the middle of the tribe of Israel. Let me just read the scriptures particular to that. In Exodus, uh, if you have your Bible, I really hope you have your Bible. Exodus is the second book of Moses from Genesis. This is what the Bible said in chapter 26. Make the tabernacle with, uh, no, no, chapter 27. From 26, dinescribe niya kung anong gagawin. But today what we'll be describing will be the tent, the tabernacle, yung outer court, the stuff in, the, in between, the stuff inside. This is how, let me, let me just simpl- simplify this. God said, make me a tabernacle, make me a mishkan. It will be, I think I have a picture there. There it is. Ayan. That's the camp of God that, that, that he wants to make. It's 100 cubits long, 50 cubits yung kanyang width, and then it is made of linen, sa gilid, linen, and then in the middle, uh, facing east, when the sun rises, there's a 20 cubits, around 30 feet wide gate. It is divided, if you will look at, the, at this one, there is like a tent down sa further back somewhere in the west. That is the tent of the holy tent. Outside is the courtyard. Today we will be discussing the items in the courtyard. The items in the courtyard would be yung altar burnt offering, altar of the burnt offering. It's made of bronze. And then the brazen laver, which is also made of bronze, brazen laver. And of course we'll be discussing the gate. So in, in Exodus chapter 27, uh, let me just read this. Make a courtyard for the tabernacle. The south side shall be 100 cubits long. It's to have curtains of finely twisted linen with 20 posts and 20 bronze braces and with silver hooks and bands on the post. The north side shall also be 100 cubits long and it's to have curtains with 20 posts and 20 bronze bases with silver posts, silver hooks and bands on the post. The west end of the courtyard shall be 50 cubits wide and have curtains with 10 posts and 10 bases. On the east and towards the sunrise, courtyard shall also be 50 cubits wide. The curtains 15 cubits long are to be on one side of the entrance with three posts and three bases. The curtains 15 cubits long are to be on the other side with three posts and three bases. For the entrance of the courtyard, provide a curtain 20 cubits long of blue, purple, scarlet yarn, and finely twisted linen, the work of an embroider with four posts and four bases. All the posts around the courtyard are to have silver bands and hooks and bronze bases. The courtyard shall be 150 long, 50 cubits long, 50 cubits wide, have to 150 cubits long, have 50 cubits wide, and the curtains of fine linen twisted five cubits high with bronze bases. All the other articles used in the service of the tabernacle, whether their function including, whatever their function, including a tent peg for, for it, and those for the courtyard are to be of bronze. So 150, cubit, 150 cubits, 150 cubits is equivalent to 18 inches. So if you, would, uh, if you would calculate that, approximately it should be 150 feet long and then 150, 150 cubits with you. And it says in here, if you would look at it from the outside, it will be taller than a man, the curtain, you know, yung, yung perimeter. It is made of white. If you would be in the camp, you would see this and you would say, what is this white thing in the middle of the camp? It is so attractive. It is rectangular. But when you come to the west, to the east side, you will see a portion around 30 feet where it is, the color it says in here would be uh, uh, blue, purple, scarlet, which is red, and it's a finely twisted linen work of an embroider. Meaning from, from the continuity of white, suddenly on the eastern side will be the gate halo halong kulay of blue, 
of purple, of red, which is scarlet. And these are the colors that pictures Jesus. Remember, we're looking, we are now in the Aleptah, whereby we're discovering Jesus in the Old Testament. Let me give you a tip. Whatever implements in the temple or the uh, tabernacle, from inside and outside, if the question is, what does it represent? 99.9% the answer is Jesus. Everything, and we will see that later. And so it says in there, they shall be made of bronze. Let me just give you, an, I will not be preaching on the implements inside the Holy of Holies. Pastor will be dealing with that. But I would like to dwell on the outside, the relationship of the tabern, of the uh, tabernacle of Moses pertaining to the uh, camp, what is inside the curtain and the gate, and then the bronze, uh, the bronze implements. The bronze is a symbol of judgment. Everything outside the holy tent is made of bronze. Everything inside is gold. Once, once they, we, we start discussing about the holy place or the holy folies, you would see that the bronze is no longer found in there. Everything else will be gold inside, but outside will be the gold. And so a, a Jew, an Israelite, when he, was, he will be in the camp in the wilderness, when he looks at this, a rectangular item, white on the sides, with a tent in the middle, and there will be the smoke coming out. From the top, that's the glory of the Lord, demonstrated within the Holy of Holies. And every day they see this. And outside, there will be this gate, the, the, the linen with many, many colors. It is very inviting. If you're walking around 100, 100 feet this way, 100 feet that way, it's all white. And suddenly you come to a gate with many, many colors. Of course, you would try to say, wait, what's with the break? I want to go inside. This is where the people are allowed to bring in and they have to come in with an offering. The first thing that they will be encountering will be, will be this. Well, that's, this, this is just an artist's rendition of how it looks like. Parang psychedelic 1970s yata yung gawa. So he will go in to the gate. He will be allowed. And that will be, he will be carrying an offering. And the first thing he would encounter will be this implement. It is called the, brazen, the, uh, the, the um, altar the, of burnt offering. This altar of burnt offering is actually a square even on both sides. And it is made of bronze. Actually, it's made of acacia wood. Tapos, merong bronze sa ibabaw, merong gratings. It looks like your regular barbecue place. It has four horns, symbolizing the power, or also that is where they tie up the animal and burn. Sa ilalim nun is where they would gather the ashes. So a, a, a Jew would come in, an Israel would come in, to worship the Lord, he will bring an animal. If he can afford a goat, then he'll bring a goat. A sheep, he'll bring a goat. A sheep or a bull. If not, then maybe a bird. This will all be burnt in there. This is a picture of Jesus' atoning sacrifice. Again. Remember, you go through the gate. Jesus said, I am the gate. You heard about that? We discussed that last time in, in our um, Alpha and Omega. Jesus said, I am the gate. This is the gate now that they copied when they built the Temple of Solomon. It became the Eastern Gate or the Gate Beautiful. And this gate now, if you would look at it in Jerusalem, the gate is existent but it is closed. It is shut because there was a prophecy in the Bible that that has to be closed. And it will be open when the Messiah will come. And it is closed. The Muslims, what they did was to pile, they made it as a, Libingan, a cemetery, because they believe that when the Messiah comes, he will not go to the dead bodies, because they have a, a weak picture of a Messiah. But the Bible said God will open that, and there will be water will go through and wash the whole thing away. The, right now, the eastern gate is closed. That was the precursor to that, the, the gate that Jesus is talking about. He will go to that gate again. As you pass through the gate, you will encounter this. The first thing that you will know if you seek God is that you need an atonement, that you are a sinner. A person who do not know that he's a sinner will not find God. You'll find something else, something that looks like you, who will always say yes to you. You will never, never find God. A person who actually wants to seek God, the first thing that will come upon him is, I am a sinner. And when you come to that conclusion, then you would know that you cannot save yourself. You need to come to the uh, brazen... Um, altar and you will be requiring an offering a requiring an offering for your